Greetings, everyone. I'm Scott Rodell here at the Great River Dawa Center. And in this episode of Chinese Swords and Swordsmanship, we're going to take a look at a Qing Dynasty war dao. The Huang Chao Li Qi Tu Shi, the imperial regulations for the Qing Dynasty, lists seven different sabers with long grips. So those seven are the, are the official ones that are made by pattern, long-handled sabers that were issued to the military. And there were weapons that were issued to both the bannermen and to the Luing, the Chinese troops. When I first examined this sword with this, with this long blade and the, and the long grip, I thought, this looks a lot like a, a Don Dao. Now, of course, at that time, it wasn't surprising that my mind went to the Don Dao as a possibility because I was translating the Don Dao Fa Xuan, a, a Ming Dynasty manual late in the dynasty that was about two-handed sword use and has a, uh, the Don Dao has a very long blade, at least 35 inches long, and there's one with an even longer blade. But as I handled this sword, I realized, no, the proportions are just not right for a Don Dao. You can't really wield this and do the same sort of actions that are, you see in the manual with a blade that's only 30 inches long, or this one is actually 29 and a half inches long, so that's about 75 centimeters long. Now, of course, at 29 and a half, this blade's been polished repeatedly. It was probably about 30 inches originally, and it has a grip length of nine inches or about 24 centimeters. So I thought, hmm, what, which particular type of two-handed saber is this? And of course, the answer was to go take a look at the regulations, to look into Huang Chao Li Qi Tu Shi and see which of those seven this corresponded to. And when you do, you look at the regulations, this very closely conforms and essentially is the same as the Luing Wu Dao. During the Qing Dynasty, there were essentially two armies. There were the bannermen, who were made up of Manchus, Mongols, and some Chinese who were with the Qing, with the Manchus very early on, from the very beginning of the dynasty. And then there was the Han army, or the ethnically Han people army, that were the Liuing, or the Green Braves. And this particular weapon was called the Liuing Wadao. So it was specifically issued to the Liuing. Now, the term Wadao is actually a derogatory term. Wu means uh, a small place or a place where animals gather or bandits gather. Wu is also a homonym for Wu Ko, which it means dwarf bandits, which was another derogatory Chinese term for the Japanese. So in the regulations, rather than use Wu Ko, they used a slightly less, slightly more sophisticated term to say, you know, the, the weapon from a small place where animals are or bandits are. But still, of course, it was derogatory because it was non-Chinese. This saber is the Qing Dynasty take on a Japanese katana. And it's quite similar in proportions. Uh, one thing that you'll note, though, is the blade form, this curvature. It slightly accelerates. And in the in the regulations, it talks about how this blade form should be the same as the Luing Pian Dao, or slicing saber. And this one is another backup for this, for this suggestion that this is a, a Wu Dao, is that it does have this same blade form like the manual talks about. One of the other interesting things that the Huang Chao Li Qi Tu Shi mentions is that this sword is similar to, or the same sort of weapon, as the Shaolin Gun Fa, or the same use as the Shaolin Gun Fa. In this case, Gun means a staff. And that's quite interesting because that's the same manual written by uh, Cheng Zongyou, who wrote the Dan Dao manual. And it's quite curious that it says this weapon is a similar kind of weapon because the Gun is a six foot long staff. So, uh, I think perhaps all they're really meaning to say there is that this is a two-handed weapon, because it doesn't really make sense that a weapon like this, where your hands are so close together, would be wielded the same way you wield a, a six-foot staff where your hands are much further apart. It also mentions that this sword is very similar to the uh, Woko Bamboo Bien. Now, a bien is, a, is an iron whip. So it's usually translated as whip, but it's a segmented one. It looks kind of like the way a bamboo is. It's essentially an iron rod. Uh, but I'm not familiar with any weapon in Japan that really is similar to this kind of weapon. So it's a curious note in the Huang Chao Li Qi Tu Shi. It has been suggested that this Wodao 
is actually the precursor or the same weapon as the Miao Dao. I would say that's really incorrect. And my reason for saying that is the blade length and grip length. Yes, this works quite well for techniques that you see in the Miao Dao. I've trained with this particular sword. I've practiced the Miao Dao form and Miao Dao techniques using this weapon. However, it's still quite different. The Miao Dao typically has a 35 inch blade and a 14 inch handle. So to suggest that this particular weapon, which is really the Qing take on a katana, is the same as the Miao Dao with a blade length that's five or six inches longer than this, and the grip that's at least 50% longer really doesn't add up. This is really a, a different kind of weapon. This is the Qing take on a katana, not a Miao Dao. So there you have it. Mystery solved, not a Dan Dao, a Qing period Wu Dao. Thanks everyone for watching. Just want to say I really appreciate all the subscriptions that have been rolling in. If you haven't already subscribed, we appreciate it if you would. And if you'd go ahead and hit the uh, thumbs up button if you like this video, we really appreciate that as well. Until next time, thanks and zaijian.